We're getting more clarity around those proposed changes to the capital gains tax rules. Joining us now to help break it all down is Nicole Ewing, Director of Tax and Estate Planning at TD Wealth. Nicole, always a pleasure to have you in the program. Oh, great to be here, Greg. You and I have discussed this topic several times. Of course, it was part of the budget, and now we actually have legislation that we can go through, and that well, by the royal way, I mean someone like you who understands it can go through and start to break it down. I mean, what, what are we learning through this? You know, and it's tough because it was 59 pages of legislation and but or proposed legislation, and when we think about, for those of us who want to understand what the rules actually say, the way that that's written, it would have a it would say substitute this clause with this clause, and in section B, remove this and insert that. And so your experts in this space are actually needing to go through and compare the old language with the new language. So this is a bit of an exercise that we've been going through for the last week. Of course, the timelines are very short on this, and so we've been crunching as much as we can to get as much clarity as we can. Um, what we know, of course, is that the new rules will kick in as of June 25th. So all trades, all activities must be done by the 24th, must have been done and cleared by the 24th. There was some hope that there would be an opportunity to make an election or to otherwise crystallize a gain without actually needing to dispose of the property, that the legislation clarified that that is not going to happen. So you must actually dispose of it for tax purposes, um, which means no longer having beneficial title to it. Um, and then you can purchase it back if you like, being mindful of the superficial loss rules as well. So we can chat about that a little bit, but everything must be done by the 24th, which really means must be done now. <laughs> Today's the day that it must be done. Um, and to clarify, just a level set for everyone that the, the new rules of course say that the first $250,000 of realized gains for individuals um, will be subject to a one half or 50% inclusion rate. Amounts over that will be subject to the two thirds inclusion rate. And for corporations, that two thirds inclusion rate will kick in on the first dollar. For trusts, most trusts, it will kick in on the first dollar. But we did get clarity in the legislation that the um, that there are some carve outs for that. So a qualified disability trust and a graduated rate estate, which is a trust for tax purposes, will also get the benefit of that two hundred and fifty thousand dollar lower um, uh, exemption amount on the on the lower um, amounts, which is a little bit of a relief, I think, for some folks who are dealing with with those sorts of trusts. Interesting details there. You mentioned the fact, of course, that people for other purposes, and you, may, you come near the end of a calendar year, maybe they do a little tax, tax loss selling. Mm -hmm. There's rules about when you can buy that security bag. They are forbidden from ever owning it again, but there are right. rules. Uh, how does that work into this if people are thinking ahead of this date, well, maybe they're going to get rid of some assets? Well, so those rules, so if we are disposing of our assets pre, I'll say the 24th, because mm -hmm. I say the 25th, but by the 25th, that's when the new, the new rates apply. So by the 24th, if you dispose of your property and then repurchase it within the 30 days, either before or after, if you have have a loss that will be treated as a superficial loss and it will be denied essentially. That will also apply as between you and your spouse. So if you are selling something and they are purchasing something during this time, you'll want to make sure that you're coordinated around it because your loss might be denied um, or um, your gain might be treated differently than you expect if then to make sure you're coordinating with your with your spouse on that um, some other things so particularly with the gains if people are dealing with real property for example and and wanting to dispose of their real property before the June 24th deadline they should be aware of those anti-flipping rules that say that if you um, dispose of a real property within a year of acquiring it it will be treated as fully as, as income and you won't don't get the benefit of a um, principal residence exemption or any of the other kind of rules that would apply. And so just making sure that you're aware of some of those potential other ways that you might be tripping up um, in this situation. You'd also want to, if you are a business owner, for example, there's some cautions here to be aware of. If you were to trigger your gains, um, that will be treated as passive income for, for tax purposes within a, within a corporation. You have a limit of, there's some math that's done, but essentially if you have more than 150,000 of passive income within your corporation, you are going to have a, um, a, a clawback on your small business rate. And you will no longer be able to get the benefit of that small business deduction, which is pretty significant. Um, so making sure that 
whatever you're doing now is not going to trip you up for next tax year. So that's the small business deduction. It's also the um, alternative minimum tax, which again is sort of a new thing for people to be thinking about, might not have been on their radar before, but whatever you're doing now, if you are realizing significant gains in advance of that, um, the deadline of the 24th, then you could potentially be seeing some challenges come next year with your planning as well. Covered a lot of ground. I feel like there's more ground to cover. Employee stock options. There, there's implications here. There are. And so that rule as well, the two-thirds inclusion rule, you are sharing that limit, that $250,000 limit between your employee stock options and your capital gains that you're realizing. And so if you are somebody who has significant um, employee stock options as part of your income, be very careful about what you're doing or have perhaps have already done. Um, because you need to coordinate those two things together. You don't get a separate limit, $250,000 limit for your stock options and a $250,000 limit for your capital gains. Those are going to be treated together for purposes of the threshold. So again, if we're making any sort of plans or changes to the way that we might want to be taking in income, and I want to caution as well, there's been a lot of talk about whether or not people should realize gains in advance of the deadline. And we've done a bunch of math and figured out certain circumstances where it makes more or less sense. Um, really, for those who are not planning on touching this money for, and depending on the amounts in question, we could be looking at anywhere between you know, five and eight years-ish. Um, if you're not touching that money between now and then, generally speaking, the best advice is hold tight. Don't be realizing your gains in advance because you're just essentially then accelerating your tax. Mm -hmm you're prepaying tax that otherwise wouldn't have need to be paid and you're losing that deferral advantage of keeping the funds um, invested. And so we don't want to be doing sort of knee jerk reactions to selling. If you were planning already in selling those assets before the end of the year, sure, accelerating them before the, the 25th um, might make sense for you. But otherwise, if you weren't planning to do this and we've seen a lot of um, you know, just nervous behavior, I think, over the last little while of people not really understanding where the rules might be impacting them. But uh, generally speaking, if, if your advisors have not at this point come to you or you've been talking with them saying that there's something significant you should be thinking or doing, then you're probably fine. <laughs> That's an important point too, <laughs> I mean, because these are, these are complicated situations that we've outlined. You've outlined them beautifully and simply, but you know, yeah. the average person would say, I, I might need to talk to someone if I think there's any implication for me before you have that knee-jerk reaction speak to somebody well and there's that you should be speaking with somebody but the challenge right now greg is that there's nobody available to speak to <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> right the because advisors those who are you know, managing portfolios may have like there are deadlines in terms of when we can put those trades through and they need the time to be able to analyze and process those but so too accountants and lawyers who are helping clients through and navigate this they have essentially put up the, you know, turn the, the sign on the door to close. We cannot take on any more, um, any more clients during this time. And so don't, don't make that fear of not having access to the experts, not being able to get their advice, make you do something yourself. Rest assured that generally speaking, most people in this situation are not going to be um, terribly put off side by these rules. Now, one of the conversations a lot of people are having is around losses and how losses will be treated. And well, I have losses from last year and I want to carry them forward. Or if I realize losses now, what does that mean in terms of the future? Generally speaking, again, there's going to be a, um, a, a formula that needs to be applied, but your an equivalent amount of gains and losses will be able to offset each other regardless of what period they were incurred. Um, and so if you had a $6,000 gain and a $6,000 loss, regardless of what that inclusion rate is, they should generally be canceling each other out. Again, we need to get into the, the specifics of each, of each situation to see what would make sense with that. Um, but that's going to be just really for this year where we have two periods. So we'll have the pre-June 25th period where your gains and losses are calculated at the 50% inclusion rate and then we'll have the post amount where you will then have the $250,000 limit um, at threshold and you'll have the ad additional inclusion beyond that. After, when we go into next year, the losses from this year to the extent you can carry them forward um, would be 
it, they would be adjusted and able, and able to offset an equivalent amount of gains in a future year.